on the first question, uh, in what sense uh, the way we're thinking now and the way we're educating youth uh, may be part of the problem. I wanted to say that in my view, and having had three children uh, go through the education system of different countries at different times, um, that education today is still very much a product of modernist uh, mindsets. And much like prisons, schools are disciplinary institutions in keeping with Michel's Foucault's masterful characterization thereof. And the disciplinary measures are basically forms of mental punishment and the methods used today are negative assessment um, and expulsion in the extreme. And on the other hand, the carrot is sort of the, the promise of a high income job. That's, that's basically how it's, it works. And I feel that the joy of learning, exploration and discovery are not as central as they should be and must be. I think it's unlikely that such a disciplinary authorian, authoritarian system will be able to encourage our new generation to come up with creative ways to transform society. And if they do, I think it will be not because of their education, but rather despite of it. <laughs> Certainly that's my own personal ex experience of it too. And by and large, the other problem is that today's education system reproduce power relations in society. And you know, the, the evidence says that social mobility has trended downwards, at least in the West from the eighties onward. And education has lost much of its em emancipatory promise. For example, mm -hmm. the, the private school system in English speaking countries uh, show such a reproduction of power through education for the privileged only or good education for the privileged in the extreme. There and almost everywhere else also political education is woefully inadequate. And as a side effect, whatever knowledge of science students may acquire can and, and often is later sidelined because they become involved in some kind of identity politics, which overrides their sci scientific thinking. So science education by itself does not make a person rational when it comes to politics. Finally, the liberal scientific worldview that is still propagated in education uh, is also nature destroying, we all know that. So blind faith in technology threatens to repeat the mistakes of the past. The ecological disaster we face today is 100% a result of technological innovations, much lauded as they may be. But they are, and that is because they are created to produce private profit while socializing costs or externalizing them to ecosystems. So we need a new, more critical science, a science that does not wash its hands in presumed innocence. And the changes of thinking, the second questions, I think less hierarchy and more respect for young learners would be really helpful. Young people are, and Rudolfo will probably confirm that for you, are proven to be more intelligent than older people. Their brains are working perfectly well, much better than ours though they may have less knowledge. So why do we treat them in such condescending ways? Especially in the age of internets, where learners, you know, really they have plenty of facts at their hands, but they need to understand principle, principles and learn analytical skills and not memorize things they can Google in seconds. There's still a lot of me mechanical road learning of, of the corpus of knowledge. And that is outdated. It keeps happening in schools, though, even at undergraduate level. Uh, of course, some facts are still worth having at one's fingertips, say, if you're a doctor. Yeah, but we, would, we should be very selective about what factual learning we, we uh, hang on to and, and what we replace with analytical skills. The interpretation of facts is what really matters. We are all bombarded with facts every day, and as well as with fake news, pretend facts. And if people are unskilled in verifying facts and in, and in interpretation, they make individual mistakes or they rely on social media for their identity and forming of opinions. And as a result, you get populism. Education, I think, must inoculate learners against that danger. 
uh, le learners also le need opportunities, I think, to ex work in explorative projects, which would help them develop their creative imagination and also their ability to collaborate in teams. I'm going to talk uh, tomorrow in, in, a, in a paper session on also on the uh, role of imagination and exactly how that's sort of anchored in, in our perception and our, our, the very root of our consciousness. Um, and that's uh, imagination is a mental faculty that's almost missing completely in modernist thought. And most of all, learners need to make, learn to make more value, value judgments. And I don't mean just in the humanities, but also in natural science. They have to think about what technology actually means. So science teachers should be trying to deliver a reflexive element in their teaching, or else we will keep perpetuating, perpetuating the myth that science and technology are value neutral. The science teacher, I think, should not just should, for example, not just speak about nuclear fission uh, as a physics problem and, and ignore the implications from nuclear power plants to atomic bombs. So critical science teaching is, is one practical, vital practical step. And students should walk away thinking that, well, it's great to understand the laws of nature and it opens many technical opportunities, but it's also dangerous much as, you know, in the story of the uh, magician's apprentice. Uh, just an example, I recently wrote a paper about ethics in nanoscience in food, you know, we're eating nanoparticles the whole time, every day. There's too much, too little discussion of ethics in such new fields. And yet this failure, for example, could cause very serious harm. So precautionary harm reduction should be a central part of the design process in technology and also in teaching, teaching uh, to think about the implications of, of, of uh, technology. Finally, on the question of, of educational philosophy uh, of the kind that Vaz has been very uh, uh, consistently advocating for, and I, I just wanted to say that it's not really that new, it's not that far removed, at least in theory, from the humanistic Renaissance idea ideal of education, you know, that's well known from the German idea of Bildungs uh, ideal. So, meaning holistic, well-rounded, value sensitive, leading to a civilized and humane attitude. The problem therefore, I think, is not that we lack ideas of what education should be, but we don't know how to put that into practice. Personally, I think we should, we need a revolution in teacher training. We may also need some training for university lecturers. Many of them never received any pedagogical training at all. And yet are expected to live lectures at the level of sophistication of say a high quality uh, TED talk with advanced audio visuals and so on. The support is just not there for these educators. High school teachers uh, simply do not have the time to develop sophisticated lesson plans. We could perhaps cut their contact hours in half and double their numbers, but who will pay for it? Are we willing to pay for that? Or we can provide them with advanced curriculum support, which may be more cost effective. And I don't mean textbooks or model worksheets or things like that, but lesson plans with advanced audiovisual content. The teacher would then become more of a moderator and facilitator, someone who accompanies the learner and helps them to process and interpret the content. That's just on a practical level. I'll rest my case there. Thank you.